Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I want to show you something. There's a mass of warm air from the Atlantic Ocean. So it's very warm and moist air, a lot of water vapor, a lot of clouds. And it's moving like a branding iron, a hot branding iron, going slicing right up into the Arctic, cutting the polar vortex, causing a huge disruption, huge distortion of the jet streams. Um, and it's changing everything in the Arctic, and that's then propagating, those changes are then propagating down to lower latitudes. So Google Earth Null School, okay? And you get this type of thing. I'll just get the lights. There's some dirt on the uh, camera lens, excuse me, there. Okay, so let me show you what's happening here. You can follow along if you have a uh, second device. So you get this if you Google Earth Null School. First of all, we'll go up to the Arctic. So we'll just drag this guy and expand it a little bit. So here we are in the Arctic, Greenland, Canada, Asia. Click on Earth. Okay, so we're looking at air at the surface. We're looking at the winds. And uh, let's have a look at what the jet streams are doing. So we need to go up to 250 millibar here. And what you can see is you can see this very curvy ridge going far up into the Arctic, this jet stream. So there'll be hot, uh, moist air coming right up here um, towards Svalbard, and then this heads right into the, the Arctic. So uh, we can see how this shifts over time. If I hit the double arrow forward, it goes one day forwards two days forward, and you can see how the configuration is changing. Look how far you're extending right up into the Arctic here. Uh, another day forward, and then there's no data. If I click now, it brings us back to the present. Now, I've talked about the stratospheric polar vortex. So that's even higher in the air. The pressure's even lower, 10 hexapascals. One hexapascal is the same thing as millibar, so I'll say, I'll say them interchangeably. And what you can see here is you can see uh, two loops here. Okay, you can see this main very strong loop here and then there's a secondary loop here. And when this happens, when the vortex is split, if it's a single vortex, it will be, you know, one circular or elliptical uh, distorted um, set of uh, high speed winds, uh, but it's split into two here. Um, click on this again. Um, let's find where the North Pole is. So if I just move this slightly, you can see right here roughly is the North Pole. Okay, 89.91, close enough to 90. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going, let's go back to the surface and let's look at the temperatures. So we click on temperature here and you can see the temperature at the North Pole, minus 26.3 degrees Celsius. The green is above zero temperature. So we're getting this incursion, this hot branding iron from the North Atlantic, carrying moisture, carrying very warm temperatures, going up into the Arctic. Now let's cycle forward three hours at a time. So we just click on the single forward arrow. Okay, so we're advancing three hours at a time. Now remember it's completely dark in the Arctic, 24 hours of darkness, sun doesn't come above the horizon. So what you can see is you can see the temperature changing at the North Pole as I cycle through, and you can see this green um, region above zero temperatures going further, it's just south of Svalbard right now, it moves right up further into the Arctic. So this is uh, a model of, of what happens over the next uh, uh, number, several days, number of days. Okay, so you can see the temperature here at the North Pole. Okay, now it's covered in the pink. It gets colder again. This excursion is coming up here, and I'll just keep cycling through, and you can see, you can follow this temperature if you like, and you can see how far the green area starts to penetrate into the Arctic. Okay, so the temperature's dropping quite, quite significantly. Again, every time I cycle through, it's three hours forward. So now a lot of the hot air is getting there. It's not quite above zero. It's not quite green, but this area has expanded. So of course I showed in the last couple of videos the sea ice and how poorly it's faring. 
and this has a significant negative effect on the growth of sea ice, obvious, obviously. Okay, so we'll just keep going forward. Minus 5.9 at the North Pole, minus 2.4. Okay, that's on February 4th at 1900, which is 7 p.m. local time. And we'll just keep going forward, minus 4.1. Okay, so it doesn't quite reach zero or go above zero. But up here we get we get above zero. Anything that you see green is above zero. Okay. And we can just keep going. Okay, and you can see what happens. This is shifting up. I showed the jet stream was shifting up the ridge, so it's carrying it away from the North Pole there. And then it starts to fade and we start going into cool down again. Okay, so we have this warm air coming right up. We can go back to where it was extending quite far in. And you can see the temperature, if you click over here, you know, one and a half degrees. You can zoom in with the slider and you can focus on, you know, you have more resolution and see what the maximum temperature is, probably reaches a couple degrees here. So this, is, this warmth is being carried deep into the Arctic in the middle of the, of the winter. You know, we've, we've seen this happen um, a few times in the last few years, but this is a, this is a new phenomena. You know, it would be a very <coughs> exciting and amazing science, except if you lived on another planet and you were looking at this. But, you know, unfortunately, we live on this planet and our planet is changing and we can't ignore these changes, right? These changes have enormous global implications. And I've been arguing for quite a while we need to declare a, a global climate change emergency. Okay, so now we can go back to, if we go back to the present and we look at the mean sea level pressure, okay? When you click on this, if you're not sure what you're looking at, it gives you the information here. So this is the mean sea level pressure. Uh, again, we've gone off the North Pole. So this is the North Pole roughly about here. And then we can advance, I'll just, for the sake of time, I'll advance a full day. And you can see how the pressure is changing. Now look at this beast here. Look at the pressure here, 957. Does this remind you of something? You know, remember that weather bomb that came up the coast of North, the, off the east coast of North America recently? Okay, the pressure hit 951 millibar in the center. You know, and we're almost there right now. And this is a very wide region. So this is a, you know, we have to come up with a new name for this type of beast, which is penetrating right up into the, into the Arctic. So I'll just continue going on another day. You can see it's moved up here, right off Greenland. 951 millibar, you know, massive storm, very high wind, very low pressure. You know, it's a very large cyclone. You know, this is, has similarities to hurricanes, although the, the, the eye, the region of the low pressure here, it reaches the pressures of the central eye uh, category three hurricane is 940 to 960. Here we're 951, and this is the exact pressure of the minimum of the weather bomb which came up the East Coast, like I said. So we'll have a look at it here. And now we're right over here, okay? It doesn't quite reach the, the North Pole. And we'll just ex keep going forward. And now it starts dissipating, and lo and behold, the conditions are set so that another one forms there and moves up and we're out of data here. The, the projection goes to February 7th, 7 p.m. Uh, local time. So let's go back, click now again. And now let's look at the uh, total precipitable water. Okay, and you can see what happens as you go forward here. Okay, the region, um, there, there's regions where the, the, there's a lot more water Okay, so the air is warmer, warm air holds more water, that water goes up, and uh, you can sort of track what that does as it, mo it moves up here, as I showed the jet stream moves up there. So this is the ridge of the jet stream, it would be here. And uh, we can keep going, and it moves up over here. Now, if I go back to now and look at the total cloud water, so you can see the clouds that are going deep into the Arctic, 
Okay, you can see the region of the clouds where there's high water, high precipitable water, high water vapor. Of course, it's going to be snow unless it goes above zero at the surface. And you can see what those clouds are doing as well. Okay, um, now what I want to look at, um, okay, so I've shown you that their temperatures are just plowing, warm temperatures plowing right into the Arctic, bringing very, very warm air. So let's have a look at this. Um, let's have a look at what's happening at some other parts of the Earth. Okay, so I've got Google uh, here, Google Earth Pro. Let's go to, um, let's go to Cape Town. Cape, Cape Town City Center, uh, South Africa. Let's go there. Okay, and have a look at what the jet streams are doing down there. I mean, why is this region why is this city being in drought as bad as a one in 300 years, you know, maybe even worse than one in 300 year drought. So here's, uh, so here's where we are, Cape Town. You know, if you have this little protrusion here, it's about the center there. You can get the latitude and longitude, and then you can go to, um, go up here. Okay, and here we go. Here we have Cape Town. So I've entered, I've moved this guy around to match the longitude and latitude of Cape Town. And what we can see here is, let's go to temperatures first of all. Okay, this is at present. All right, again, you can click now just to make sure. And what you can see is, uh, you know, 18 degrees Celsius there. You can look at total precipitable water. Okay, and let's back up in time. Let's go back uh, and see what's going on. So look at that number. This is the kilograms of water in a column in an area one square meter by one square meter going from the surface right up to the top of the uh, uh, troposphere, they're called the tropopause. And uh, let's just uh, keep advancing back and see how that number changes. Okay, it's 13, it's decreasing. So it is fluctuating around. Okay, so we'll go back I'm going back a day at a time here. Okay, so let's have a look at what the jet streams are doing. I got to click wind here. Okay, so what you can see is there's a bit of a ridge here. There's very strong jet streams and you could track through uh, all the days to see what the jet stream was doing. Let's look at the uh, clouds, okay? So we'll go wind. Uh, we need to be at the surface and we're looking at clouds. Okay, so here are the, the white areas are, uh, there's clouds, right? This is low pressure area swirling around the clouds. It's rotating clockwise because it's in the Southern Hemisphere. So it's the cyclones in the Southern Hemisphere are going clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise in the Northern Hemisphere because of the Coriolis force, rotation of the earth. So let's have a look at what's going on with the clouds here. So we'll go forward in time now from here okay and you can see well gee uh you know the clouds are avoiding this area in general you know the the, the jet stream patterns there's a little bit there but you can go through you could zero you could mouse zoom in or whatever but generally the clouds are for the most part avoiding that area okay it's in record drought almost a one in 400 year drought rain all around it but not where you need it and then moving forward it's the same thing and you can look at the jet streams again um right very strong jet streams guide you know separating the cold air from the warmer air uh, but there's no precipitation there's no low pressure area there there's no no precipitation let's have a look at uh you know we can have a look at uh paris now so if we go to if we search for Paris, Paris, France, and go there. Okay, search. Again, in Google Earth Pro or Google Earth if you've got it. Okay, and you can see, you know, expand out and you can see where Paris is. And now I will go to um, go back here and we'll have a look here. So here's Paris. 